In this lesson, we're going to be solving linear equations by graphing, solving absolute value equations by graphing, and using linear equations to solve real-life problems. You can use a system of linear equations to solve an equation with variables on both sides. So step one, to solve the equation ax plus b equals cx plus d, write two linear equations. So all we're doing is we're setting y equals the left side and then setting y equal to the right side. And then in step two, we're going to graph the system of linear equations, and the x value of the solution of the system of linear equations is the solution of the original equation, ax plus b equals cx plus d. For this example, we need to solve the equation negative x plus 1 equals 2x minus 5 by graphing. Check your solution. Well, what I'm going to do is just set each side equal to y. So I have y equals negative x plus 1. And then I have y equals 2x minus 5. I'm just going to graph both of these equations really quickly. So this is negative x plus 1. The slope is going to be negative 1 here. And the y-intercept is going to be positive 1. So I'm going to plot this right here, my y-intercept. And then I'm going to draw every single point that fits on my graph that's going to be on this line. I'm just using my rise over run. I'm either going up one, left one, or down one, right one. And we continue to put all these points on here. And then draw a line through it. All right, now I'm going to graph the equation 2x minus 5 equals y. And the slope is 2, and my y-intercept is negative 5. So in red, I'm plotting my y-intercept. And my slope is 2, or 2 over 1. So I can, from this point, I can go up 2, right 1, and so on. And I can already tell right away that this point right here is going to be the point where the lines intersect. But I will still graph the line. So the solution to the system of equations is the ordered pair 2, comma, negative 1. But we only care about the x value because there's no y in this original equation. So solving this equation, my x value here where they intersect is just x equals 2. And that is the answer to my equation. Now, to check my solution, I can plug this in to both sides. So this is going to be negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. And then this is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 5. That's also negative 1. So we know that our answer is correct. And now we're done with this one. Solve the equation, the absolute value of x plus 1 equals the absolute value of 2x minus 4 by graphing. Check your solutions. So I'm going to show you guys my preferred method of solving this. I think this is the easiest way to do it. There is an alternate way to solve this. It's by rewriting this uh, as the equivalent linear equations and then graphing two different systems of equations to find your solutions. Uh, but the way I do it, you just need one graph and we're just going to graph these uh, absolute value functions. So first I'm just going to rewrite my equation here into two equations of absolute value. So y equals the absolute value of x plus 1 and then y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 4. So I'm going to start by graphing this equation. And the most important thing to do whenever you're graphing an absolute value equation is to find the vertex. And in this case, I know it's going to be negative 1 because we want to figure out what x value is going to make this whole entire expression equal 0. That's what gets us our vertex. Okay, And negative 1 plus 1 does equal 0. And if you're not sure, you can always set the inside expression equal to 0 and then solve. Anyway, I know my x component is going to be negative 1. And then the y component is just the constant that's being added to this. Well, I don't see a constant here, so that's going to be 0. If we saw something like plus 2 or minus 7, that would be our y value, but there's nothing here, so it's going to be 0. So now I'm going to plot this ordered pair, negative 1, 0. It's right there. Now the next thing I want to ask myself is, is this going to be a v-shape or an upside-down v-shape? Okay. Well. I don't see a negative on the outside of the absolute value, so this is going to be a v-shape. And then I also don't see a coefficient on the outside or inside of the absolute value. So I know that my slope is going to be positive 1 to the right and then negative 1 to the left. So I'm going to go up 1, right 1, and then from here I'll go up 1 and left 1. Now, just because I have a larger uh, graph, I'm actually going to go up 10 and then right 10 units, so that's going to be right here. And then over here, I'll be able to go up 9 and left 9. 
Now I'm just going to draw my rays. You could include every point uh, that you can fit in the grid lines, but uh, just to save time, I uh, only included this point and this point. They're farther away, so my lines can be accurate. Anyway, now I'm going to graph this equation, and I will do this in red. So first, I want to find the vertex. Well, I can set this expression equal to 0 to find the x value of the vertex. So it's going to be 2x minus 4 equals 0. If I add 4 on both sides, I get 2x equals 4. Then divide the entire equation by 2, and I get x equals 2. So that's my vertex value. And then once again, I have no constant term on the outside, so my y value is going to be 0 here. So this is going to be the ordered pair 2 comma 0. And that is right here. I'm plotting it on the graph right now. Okay. Now, same thing. I want to see if this is going to be a V-shaped or an upside-down V. And because there's no negative on the outside, it's going to be a V-shaped. Okay. And then my slope is the number that's being multiplied by X. Well, I have a 2 here. So that means to the left, it's going to be negative 2. And then to the right, it's going to be positive 2. So from my vertex, I'm going to go up to left 1. And then I'm also going to go up 2 and right 1. Okay, so first, if I go up to left one, I see right away my first point of intersection. Okay, and I can keep doing that. Then I'm going to do up to right one again. Now I'm going to draw my rays. Now the solution to this equation is going to be where the absolute value functions uh, intersect each other. So that's going to be right here and right here. So those are the two ordered pairs, 1, 2. I'm just going to write that on the side here. 1, 2. And then this one is 5, 6. Now looking back, um, I would recommend putting all the points here that I kind of skipped over. Um, it'll just make finding these ordered pairs a little bit easier. But anyway, now the answers to this initial question is, what are the x values that make this true? And it's the x values of my ordered pairs are going to be the x values that make this true. So it's going to be x equals 1 and x equals 5. So x equals 1 and 5. So these are my solutions. And then to check our answer, I can just plug these back in and see if they work. So I'll go back up here. So first I'll test out 1. Here 1 plus 1 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. Here I plug in 1. I get 2 times 1 is 2 minus 4. That's negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. So 1 works. And then I will do 5 now. 5 plus 1 is 6. Absolute value of 6 is 6. 2 times 5 is 10, minus 4, that's 6, absolute value of 6 is 6 again. So both of my solutions work, and now we're done. Your family needs to rent a car for a week while on vacation. Company A charges $3.25 per mile, plus a flat fee of $125 per week. Company B charges $3 per mile, plus a flat fee of $150 per week. After how many miles of travel are the total costs the same at both companies? So right now we just need to write our equation and then later we can solve it by graphing. So if we look at the question, it asks us how many miles of travel are the total costs the same? What well, we see both companies, uh, they charge per mile plus the flat fee. Okay, So I'm going to call the number of miles traveled x. Okay. Now, if I think of the number of miles traveled as x, I'm going to be able to write an equation to figure out when these costs are the same. Okay. So the first company, company A, is 3.25, or $3.25 per mile, and then the flat fee is 125. So if I multiply the number of miles that I drive, x, times the amount of money per mile, that will get me the total money per mile, and then if I add the flat fee, that's going to be the total amount of money for company A. So that's going to be rewritten as... 3.25x plus the flat fee, which is 125. 
and I want this to be the same as company B, so I'm just gonna put equals, and then we'll write the expression for company B. Well, this is $3 per mile, and then I'm gonna multiply that by the amount of miles, which is X, so $3 per mile times X miles, or just 3X, and then I have to also include the flat fee here, so it's gonna be plus 150. So now that we have our equation written, um, there's all sorts of ways to solve this, but since we're focusing on solving by graphing, I'm gonna rewrite both of these equations as y equals both sides. So I'm gonna write this as y equals 3.25x plus 125, and then y equals 3x plus 150, okay? And now I'm gonna solve this system of equations that we've made by graphing. Um, and now I'm actually gonna show you how to use a graphing calculator to solve the system of equations. It's super quick. Um, so I'm gonna go to desmos.com right now. So I'm on desmos.com and I'm gonna type in my two equations, y equals 3.25x plus 125. And then my other equation is gonna be y equals 3x plus 150. All right, so now you can see that both my lines have gone away. So I can just click and drag here and then scroll in and out to change my window. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll out a bit and I can see the lines are right here. Okay, so if I zoom out more, I can see that they're kind of, it looks like they're intersecting somewhere around here. Well, I can't tell right away. So I'm gonna hit shift and click and I'm gonna change this window. And now if I click on one of these lines, we can see that the point where they intersect automatically pops up for us. So if I click there, I see this is the ordered pair 100, comma, 450. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down. 100, comma, 450. If you look at the question, it asks how many miles of travel are the total costs the same at both companies? Well, miles is X, okay, and we didn't even do this on purpose, but the, uh, the cost is Y. Um, and it's just asking us how many miles. So our X value of this ordered pair where the lines intersect is gonna be 100. So our answer is the cost of both companies are the same after driving 100 miles. So we figured out our word answer to our word problem by graphing using a graphing calculator, and now we're done.